All right, maybe you see my previous video on how I designed this. It's gonna be a three inch props, sub 250 gram FPV quad. There was one problem. I put together a shopping list about a year and a half ago. So a lot of the stuff uh, was not available anymore. One thing is I had planned to get a whole stack with the ESC, the flight controller and the VTX. The stack that I wanted, that I had planned for, is no longer available. I got a stack with this ESC and flight controller and I had to get a different VTX. This one is actually a little bit bigger than the stack. Stack ends here, this VTX ends here. And that also, that's why it's upside down because typically I would put it the other way but then you have a conflict with uh, this part of the standoffs. And another thing is the, the video camera. Video camera I planned for wasn't available. Well, that happens if you wait a year and a half. I just basically bought the, <laughs> the first one <laughs> that I saw and it was a similar price and I was like, oh, okay, this is good enough. Let's get this one instead. Um, this one is a little bit bigger. The one that I was looking at uh, was a Foxair Aero Mini. And I think it was 18 by 18 millimeters, so it would fit in in this frame because I have 20 millimeter standoffs. Uh, turns out that this one is 22 by 22, and it's um, on that little mount, so that adds a little bit extra. When I try to put it together, let's get the antenna in there. It's hard to see from behind here. Get the antenna in there like so get this oops <laughs> okay so <laughs> well I'm just gonna make some adjustments um, I'm gonna just make this gap a little bit wider and draw it back here so that this will fit the battery it's nice but I probably want to mount it on the bottom but what I didn't realize at the time is yeah it doesn't fit so now it's like not really wanting to go in between and then it doesn't really mount well so I'm going to make an adjustment and just shave off a little bit from these uh, arms so that the battery will fit on the plate. Motors, motors come with screws. Isn't that awesome that they give you free screws? But the screws that they give you are this, are five mil. These arms are five mil. So the screw is not going through. So I have to, as I'm, going to make adjustments to these arms anyway I'm going to make a little uh, extra space uh, for the screw head for the socket head okay there was one more thing I got all my parts and then I was like this is going to be sub 250 right that's the goal sub 250 quadcopter so we have the frame there And we have a receiver, it's like one gram, one and a half. We have a battery, and we have four motors. Uh-oh, we're getting close. Of course, these cables are a little bit long. I'm still going to trim them, but I'm also going to add cables to connect all the electronics together. Then we have some props. Let's put that on there there 240 and what I wanted to do um, just in case so this battery has an XT30 um, but just in case I want to use XT60 later on for more powerful batteries or something I wanted to uh, use an XT60 connector with uh, an adapter and then I just you know can use XT60 later uh oh, 255. So, what should I do now? Well, luckily, I <laughs> I started ordering uh, XT60 uh, 
connectors, but then I uh, looked in the cables that were included with the flight controller and I found this little XT30. Oh, look here, 243. And I'm still going to make that cut out a little bit bigger, so the frame is going to lose a little bit of weight. Uh, these cables are, you know, going to lose a little bit of weight because I'm going to trim them. So, looks like it's going to work. Let's cue the time lapse compilation and fix some of those issues. Okay, first of all, we needed to take off a little bit for the batteries from those arms. I went with one and a half mil, seemed to be okay. Then figure out how big those screw heads needs to need to be. Uh, drill them in there, extrude the the shape. You see that some of those circles are uh, gray. That means that the faces are oriented in the wrong way. So <clears throat> if you're actually <laughs> printing that, then you will print the opposite opposite of what you want. Uh, so that will I don't know. I'm not a SketchUp pro, so. I sometimes have these weird things, like these uh, things not extruding correctly, faces in the wrong way, but I just invert them and then, yeah, turns out all right. So let's see what we're going to do next. The frame. So I needed to make that cutout a little bit bigger and just align it with some lines that are already in the design. I think that looks better. Uh, then also still have a little bit of space around those uh, standoffs in the front. Um, so now I'm drawing some guides and some lines and trying to figure out how to make the back corner. Well, I got it figured out. Delete the extra geometry. There's no round in my design, so I'm just going to square that off. Uh, it looks better, it looks more consistent. And I sometimes run into these weird things that then it, it wouldn't let me make all the cutouts again. So I'm have, having to redraw all the geometry, all the guides and all the geometry and, and then delete it. But anyway, I'm not gonna bother you with that. You can see uh, the frame. Now I have to export it uh, to STL files and then import it in 3D printing software. I use Cura and this is super easy. Printer's already set up. I just put them in a place where it makes sense. Um, and then uh, you also have to make sure that whatever you exported came across right. So I'm looking at the geometry and I'm moving the printing layers up and down and seeing that it looks good, seems to be. So now we're just going to export it and print it. And this is just super simple. <laughs> 3D printers are so awesome. You just hit go <laughs> and you wait for two hours. and. Um, it's done. This this happened to take about two hours. Okay, so now we're going to put it together. Already put the frame together, not bothering you with that. And uh, so cut the wires to length. I have to tin them, tin the wires, and then have to tin all the pads. Um, I think it went all right. <laughs> it took a lot longer than I expected, but. Uh, also, what's cool about a time lapse, you can't really tell how long I struggled getting the temperature right to get those battery uh, wires on. But uh, from there on, it took a lot of heat to do that. But from there on, it was super easy and I could turn the heat down and just get all the EC wires on there. Um, it took so long that even my GoPro died. And so this is the second battery. <laughs> And uh, doing the flight controller, uh, the receiver, these are the receiver wires, uh, just put them in there. I have a, a wiring diagram on my computer screen that I'm constantly looking at. I already hooked up the camera I see and now working on the flight controller. Or no, on the VTX, I think, yeah. And so we're almost there. Just put those wires on there, hook up the VTX. Put it on the stack, close the thing, and now let's go back to real time and see what we got. So here we are, it's all um, put together. Um, went, it took a long time, but it went pretty good, I think. Uh, I made those adjustments that I was talking about earlier for the battery. So if you can see here, I sh shaved these parts off, this and this and this, so that the battery now fits here. No more problems with that. 
Um, oh, also make the the cutouts for the socket heads so that uh, because they weren't long enough. So now they go through. That's all good. Uh, don't worry, these are not tightened yet, so I'm not going to cut my fingers off. Uh, oh yeah, camera cutout. It's a lot bigger now, uh, so that this whole camera, that the bigger camera fits in there. I think I got a decent angle on it and looks pretty good. So let's see. Oh, this is just a camera cover. I'll just keep it on there. Let's see what we got in grams. 250, huh? Sub 250. Oh, 168 with a battery. 243. I'm legal and I'm ready to fly. If I want to get a better camera later, I want uh, one with an onboard DVR. I've eventually, if I really keep doing this and I really get into it, I want to get a better camera. So then I would get a smaller one with an onboard DVR and I think I have a little bit of room <clears throat> to uh, to do that. Um, oh, this is, I'm a little bit nervous. The battery on my multimeter died, so I haven't been able to test for shorts and continuity. But you're gonna witness it with me. This is, oh, this is so painful. I, I do have a smoke tester, so hopefully this doesn't beep. <laughs> and then I don't wreck everything. Um, I have a, do you have a fire extinguisher? Yeah, I have a fire extinguisher in the corner. <laughs> Really? Here we go. Here goes nothing. Yes. Okay. This is awesome. This went better than I expected. Um, great. Um, I guess I'll be making some uh, flight videos in the future. Ah, this is awesome. Thanks. This. Let me know in the comments if you uh, made a quad yourself and if you made your own frame or um, if you yeah if you have tips or tricks or how I can make it better maybe in the future uh, I may be making other frames I'm, I'm I might try some just transplant all the electronics to something else oh I'm sweating <laughs> that battery. <laughs> That battery really uh, made me nervous. Okay, this is cool. Whew! Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.